Those who have watched this festival for many years may this year notice some departures from tradition. Most striking, of course, the absence for the first time since 1968 of Her Majesty the Queen and the Duke of Edinburgh. And so, leading the royal family tonight, Her Majesty the Queen Mother, and with her as she enters the royal box, their royal highnesses, the Prince and Princess of Wales, Prince Andrew, Princess Anne, Princess Alice, the Duke and Duchess of Gloucester, the Duke and Duchess of Kent, Prince and Princess Michael of Kent, and His Majesty the King of Norway. Their arrival heralded now by the state trumpeters of the household cavalry. Let us now sing, God Save the Queen. Please be seated. The boys of St. Paul's Cathedral Choir with their choir master, Barry Rose. At the organ, 23-year-old Mark Blatchley, who wrote the music we are now to hear especially for this festival of remembrance. His setting of Lawrence Binion's poem, For the Fallen.
Now let's remain seated as we greet with pride the representative standards of the Royal British Legion, headed by the national standards of the Legion and the Women's Section, the standard of the Royal British Legion in Scotland, and the national standards of the Royal Naval Association, the Royal Air Forces Association. The standards of the Legion are followed by the national standards of the Cadet Forces and representative standards of Legion Youth Section. in pride of place, the Union flag, standard bearer, Mr. Les Peskett from Bognor Regis. For 26 years, a member of the Royal British Legion, after service with the Grenadier Guards, and still every inch a guardsman. The Royal British Legion national standard, worn by Mr. Ken Furness from Port Erin, Isle of Man. He's the local branch secretary and poppy organizer, a post office engineer after serving with a ground wireless crew in the Royal Air Force. The women's section national standard, born by Miss Deborah Rachevska from Wrexham, North Wales, who was Miss RBL in 1978 and took over her standard bearer's duties from her twin sister, Lucia. Their father served in the Free Polish Forces. And now the standard of the Royal British Legion Scotland, once again borne by Mr. Oliver Simpson from Jedburgh, who did national service with the King's Own Scottish Borderers and the Royal Engineers. And the national standard, the Royal Naval Association, again borne by Mr. Bill Carruthers, an ex-Marine, and the national standard of the Royal Air Forces Association, the standard bearer, Mr. Brian Burton. And now the 128 representative standards from Legion branches in Wales, Northern Ireland, Guernsey, and every corner of England. a newcomer to the festival from the newly formed branch in Osnabrück, the first and to date the only branch in West Germany, formed on the 1st of April 1982, now with a membership of 65, 10 of whom are serving members. It's very much the policy to attract young men and women still in uniform to join the Legion nowadays. The standard is borne by Mr. Carl Forsyth, who served nine years with the 16th 5th Queen's Royal Lancers. An increasing number of ladies amongst the standard bearers from the branches nowadays, many, as you will notice, wearing medals, one in their own right, and worn with every bit as much pride and presence as those of any to be seen in the muster tonight. to join this distinguished company with the accent very much on the youth of today, the standards of the Sea Cadet Corps, Petty Officer David Rich from the training ship Steadfast at Kingston, the Army Cadet Force, Cadet Corporal Robert Cheeseman from 202 Acton Army Cadet Squadron, and the Air Training Corps, Cadet Warrant Officer Richard Singh from 82 Wandsworth Squadron.
Miss Royal British Legion, Miss Judith Childs from Alsey, Bedfordshire. And she wears Welsh tweed woven by disabled ex-servicemen at the Cambrian factory of the RBL. The representative poppy appeal collectors, Mr. Gatehouse from Bedford, Middlesex, Mrs. Carpenter from London, and Mrs. Woods from Sydney. And representing the British Legion Attendance Company, Chief Superintendent Paul Saunders, ex the Grenadier Guards, and Superintendent Ernest Reed, ex Reamy. And now let us meet the men and women who wear the uniform of Her Majesty's services. The Royal Navy. Petty Officer Ken Jones and Petty Officer Dave Grassy lead 34 junior ratings drawn from a variety of shore establishments and ships within the United Kingdom. Queen Alexandra's Royal Naval Nursing Service. Superintending Nursing Officers Lorraine Westcott and Megan Atherton lead a contingent of four nursing officers and six nurses from Royal Naval Hospitals Haslar and Stonehouse. The Women's Royal Naval Service, under the command of regulating Petty Officer Wren Loretta Collins and Petty Officer Wren Kathy Finnegan, 18 members of the Women's Royal Naval Service from shore establishments at Portsmouth, Plymouth and in Scotland. Ten men of Delta Company, 40 Commando Royal Marines from HMS Warley, Plymouth, led by Sergeant Stagg, Buck, of course, to his friends. Reserve, the Royal Fleet Auxiliary, the Royal Naval Auxiliary Service, and the Royal Marine Reserve. First, representing the Royal Naval Reserve, six sailors drawn from Northwood Chatham and units affiliated to HMS President, led by CPO Reg Bragg and CPO Gordon Warner. Six Wrens under the command of leading Wrens Leslie Weston and Marjorie Topping. <laughs> CPO Boson Ray Cartwright from RFA Green Rover, incidentally the youngest Boson in the company, and CPO Yeoman John Gwilliam from RAF Fort Austin and the Royal Naval Auxiliary Service. Four members from the South End Unit, led by Chief Naval Auxiliaryman Len Muir. The Royal Marine Reserve, four members from the Commando Company London Detachment, City of London, led by Sergeant Tim Brees. The Merchant Navy. Boson Saul Newbury, whose 10th year this is at the festival, and he leads 
two cadet officers and two junior seamen from the National Sea Training College Gravesend, and two serving seamen, Bill Cross, chief security officer on the QE2, who was with her in the Falklands, and Sandy Olson, who served on the Atlantic Conveyor. And from the Royal Alfred Society's Eastbourne establishment, two veterans, Mr. Thomas Foy and Mr. Charlie Letchford. And now, the Army. From the senior regiment of the British Army, 36 guardsmen of the 2nd Battalion, the Grenadier Guards, led by Captain Anthony Hamilton. Representing the Brigade of Gurkhas, two of the Queen's orderly officers. Captain Gurung of the Gurkha Transport Regiment, the third generation of his family to serve, and Captain Limbu VC of the 10th Princess Mary's Own Gurkha Rifles, who was awarded the Victoria Cross in Borneo and is the only VC currently serving in the British Army. And representing the 1st Battalion, the Green Hearts, drummer Ian Hawkins and drummer Peter Ives, here especially in honor of their Colonel-in-Chief, King Olaf. Queen Alexandra's Royal Army Nursing Corps, four officers and four nurses from military hospitals at Woolwich and Aldershot, led by Major Di Scotchbrook. The Women's Royal Army Corps, a contingent of 14 from the Corps Centre at Guildford, Surrey, under the command of RSM Val Laycock. The Territorial Army. And leading the Terriers, ten soldiers from the Westminster Squadron of Royal Yeomanry under the command of Sergeant Fred George and Sergeant Martin Monks. And, anonymous as ever, the SAS, four members of 21st's Artists Volunteers from London. Representing the Queen Alexandra's Royal Army Nursing Corps volunteers from 217 London General Hospital, Captains Sue Ritter and Sue Reed. And they're followed by Sergeant Jan Billin and three service women from 31 Signal Regiment volunteers. Ulster Defence Regiment. From the 9th County Antrim Battalion of the Ulster Defence Regiment, six soldiers and two green finches led by Major David Wilson and CSM Len Adams. And a special welcome as ever to the men and women who daily risk so much in the defense of their homeland. The Royal Air Force. Six master air crew will meet in the center of the arena, led by Sergeant Air Electronics Operator Glenn Holmes of 201 Squadron Aria Kinloss and Master Engineer Dave Drinkwater from Aria Finningley, who incidentally is the flight engineer on the famous Battle of Britain, Lancaster. An 
Now 14 airmen representing the various trades of the Royal Air Force, all from RAF Henlo, under the command of Flight Sergeant Paul McGettigan, who will have completed 22 service years tomorrow. And from RAF Rudlow Manor, Wiltshire, four corporals of the RAF Police Support Squadron. The RAF Regiment, ten airmen from the Queen's Colour Squadron, based at RAF Uxbridge, under the command of Sergeant Alan Woods. And now ten members of Princess Mary's Royal Air Force Nursing Service, led by Flight Lieutenant Terry Smith and Flight Lieutenant Val Norden, from RAF Hospitals Warden, Ely and Halton. The Women's Royal Air Force, from RAF Northwood, Stanmore Park, Fries Norton and Lynham, 18 service women, led by Sergeant Penny Mitchell. Auxiliary Air Force, the Royal Air Force Volunteer Reserve, and the Royal Observer Corps. Five gunners from number 2503 Squadron, Royal Auxiliary Air Force Regiment from RAF Scampton, under Corporal Roger Brockman. Five service women from number one maritime headquarters unit, RAF Northwood, led by Sergeant Marion Boyle. And appearing for the first time, a member of the Women's Royal Air Force Volunteer Reserve, Flying Officer Sue Roberts from RAF Whitney, alongside her colleague from the training branch, Flight Lieutenant Neil Licorice, the CO of 1947 Squadron, the Air Training Corps. And the Royal Observer Corps from 23 Group Durham, eight members led by Observer Officer David Gresty. Representatives of the St. John Ambulance Association and Brigade, the St. Andrews Ambulance Association, the British Red Cross Society, the Air Transport Auxiliary Association, the Church Army, the Salvation Army, and the Navy, Army, and Air Force Institutes. At the head, ambulance man John Parker from Beaconsfield, who joined the Royal Navy, but transferred to the RAF, as you can see from his wings. He flew fighters and bombers from 1940 to 1946, and is still a serving flying instructor. And there, a most distinguished lady pilot, daughter of Wolf Bonato, the great pre-war racing driver, Mrs. Diana Bonato Walker, MD, who served with the ATA ferry pool, has over 88 types in her logbook, and by the time she was 22, had delivered to their squadrons 240 well, no Spitfires. no master could be complete without those grand old gentlemen who so proudly wear their scarlet coats. They are, of course, the boys of the old brigade, the Chelsea Pensioners. At their head, RSM Leslie Lamb, BM, the Royal Regiment of Fusiliers. And behind him, in order of march, Staff Sergeant David Blake, the Royal Corps of Signals, aged 78. And beside him, Sergeant George Enser of the Welsh Regiment. Behind him, Warrant Officer William Mondal of the Royal Artillery, and CQMS George Cairns of the Argyll and Sutherland Highlanders, and subsequently the Royal Air Force. And he is the first RAF regiment in pensioner at Chelsea. And then Sergeant William Caird, military medal of the Cameron Highlanders, and Bombardier Hugh O'Neill of the Royal Artillery, Warrant Officer Richard Ingram of the Gloucesters, age 72, Warrant Officer Stephen Millen of the Royal Corps of Signals, age 77, Warrant Officer William Neely of the Royal Army Education Corps, and CQMS George Simpson of the Royal Army Service Corps.
and bringing up the rear are QMS James Noak of the Royal Engineers, aged 91, the father, indeed the grandfather of the festival. The total age of these gallant warriors, 891 years. Their total service, 325 years with the colors. Ladies and gentlemen, we present to you the boys and girls of the Penn and District Royal British Legion Youth Band. Formed nine years ago, the band now has 80 members, 50 on parade tonight, ranging in age from 13 to 21. And even so, I'm told there are a few vacancies if any keen young musician may be listening. Though principally a marching band, they pride themselves on their versatility, and they play at concerts on radio and television, fates, carnivals, and, of course, in competitions, they've won both the British and European marching band championships. Their bandmaster, Mr. Richard Roach, at their head drum major, Lisa Spencer, aged 13, who last week won the drum major award at the Birmingham Band Contest, and their color guard leader is Sergeant Wendy Cooper. Now to the Army. The role of the Royal Army Ordnance Corps is to furnish supplies of every kind to the British soldier in peace and war. But how many of us realize what we generally know as bomb disposal is also one of their responsibilities? They call it EOD, Explosive Ordnance Disposal. And since 1969, EOD teams have attended no less than 41,000 incidents, and 33,000 of them in Ulster, with us in this festival to represent those highly qualified and gallant men 
the members of 11 Ordnance Battalion, EOD. The scene, somewhere in the United Kingdom. A patrolling policeman spots what has been reported as a suspicious package. He immediately uses his personal radio to report, and the message is passed on to the Joint Services EOD Operation Center, who dispatch the nearest disposal team. Expert on-site inspection assesses the situation and the appropriate course of action is decided. In this case, a personal approach is considered unavoidable. The operator, as he is called, assisted by his number two, quickly dons his protective armored suit and despite its cumbersome weight, over 50 pounds, he approaches the object as directly and quickly as possible. With him, two pieces of highly specialized equipment, the disruptor intended to destroy the bomb without exploding it, and a remote television camera to observe the results. Both must be accurately positioned, and as soon as possible, the operator withdraws to a safe distance. Only when he is sure the area is clear, he gives the order to fire the disruptor. If all goes well, the bomb is harmlessly destroyed, but immediately the operator approaches the danger zone again to perform the important but still hazardous task of collecting forensic evidence for the civil authority. But whenever possible nowadays, the army puts no man to the appalling risk of close personal approach to a potential bomb. Provided it can be maneuvered into position by remote control, this device is used. They call it a wheelbarrow, although as you can see it more closely resembles a miniature tank. Carrying its own television camera so that it can be accurately controlled from a safe distance and fitted with a grab attachment to its boom, the robot can safely lift the suspicious object and remove it from the target area for subsequent attention. And now to demonstrate the capability of these ingenious but really relatively simple little machines which were invented and developed in this country, incidentally. Imagine a more difficult application. The inside of a building, for example. A ramp, doors, and obstacles must be negotiated. The wheelbarrow is maneuvered into position by the operator and his number two, who have only the on-screen picture from the wheelbarrow's onboard television camera with which to guide it, remember. And that is easier said than done. The objective shows up clearly on the television screen as the turning wheelbarrow scans its camera in search of its target. A precise approach to within inches is essential for success, and these men have developed their own technique. They move in the twin disruptors mounted on the boom until the pieces of tape on the end of the barrels actually touch their target. Only then is the disruptor fired. And again, if all goes well, the bomb is harmlessly destroyed. Stand by! Fire! Since 1969, one George Cross, 27 George medals, and 34 Queen's Gallantry medals are amongst many other decorations won by these men and their comrades. During these operations, 20 have been injured and 19 men have given their lives. The anonymous soldiers of the EOD teams, the Royal Army Ordnance Corps. And thank you, gentlemen. This year is the 350th anniversary of the Royal Scots, the Royal Regiment. And to mark the occasion, we welcome to our festival female officers of the Edinburgh and Harriet Watt University OTC, together with the pipes, 
drums and dancers from the 1st Battalion, Royal Scots. Royal Highness the Princess Anne, what more appropriate, since to mark their 350th anniversary, the Queen personally announced the appointment of her daughter as Colonel-in-Chief of the Regiment at a Royal Review in Holyrood Park on June the 30th this year. And she succeeds the late Princess Royal, who held the appointment from 1918 until her death in 1965. Not for nothing is it known as the Royal Regiment. It was just 50 years ago, in 1933, that His Late Majesty King George V ordered the regimental pipers to wear the Royal Stuart Tartan to mark their tercentenary. And the dancers, eight soldiers from A Company of the 1st Battalion stationed in Edinburgh, led by Sergeant Robert Harper, and eight ladies of the Edinburgh and Harriet Watt University Officers Training Corps, led by junior under-officer Jill McCants. And now, yet a further tribute to the regimental 350th anniversary. The reel of the Royal Scots, specially composed by Pipe Major C.T. Clark, and put to the tune, as they say, by Mr. Roy Goldring, a distinguished member of the Royal Scottish Country Dance Society. The trues of the men and the sashes of the ladies are hunting Stuart, the tartan of the UOTC since 1960, and that of the regiment other than the pipers. And this, one dare say, is an item which will give special pleasure to the Queen Mother, a great lover of Scottish dancing, and also, of course, to her granddaughter, the Colonel-in-Chief of the Regiment. from Major W.M. Miller. Now uh, to the junior service. The Lords of the Air, they're called. And who better to represent the Lords of the Air than those young apprentices whose average age is only 17, comprising the gymnastic display team from the Royal Air Force, Holton.
Well, now, as you watch them, I'm sure you'll agree that it's hard to remember that, unlike their colleagues, the RAF gymnastic display team, the Aerobats, or indeed the Red Arrows, these lads are a spare time outfit. With a small nucleus of PT instructors, the team consists of apprentice technicians doing their three-year course at number one school of technical training, RAF Halton, near Wendover in Buckinghamshire. It was Lord Trenchard himself, the father of the Royal Air Force, who started the aircraft apprentice scheme in 1920. Halton was established two years later, and since then, many famous names in the RAF have started their service careers as Halton Brats, as they used to be universally and affectionately known. Team trained by 25-year-old Sergeant John Bryceland, after four years about to leave them for a tour of duty in the Falklands. And you can spot in, last man over the obstacles normally and equally normally with a rather special flourish. The only lady in the team there, Corporal Lynn Bryceland, married to the team leader and uh, getting a bit of a pasting at the moment, but her time will come. young Mrs. Bryceland, Corporal Lind, having a final fling with the team before her forthcoming posting to RAF Cosford. One hopes her recent knee injury, you notice its bandage, won't give her any trouble. feet the height of the obstacles now. So to their climax, the Halton version of Piccadilly Circus, and very little margin for error indeed. The gymnastic display team, RAF Halton. Now we turn to the senior service for a display of maize marching and cutlass swinging. We present the Royal Naval Display Team.
this maze marching and cutlass swinging display was contrived specially for the festival down at HMS Excellent on Whale Island at Portsmouth in a mere three weeks. 56 sailors of the Royal Navy display team carrying out a series of cutlass movements, most of them straight out of the old drill book of the last century, complicated moving patterns to be formed with not a single word of command. And bearing in mind the restricted space available and the sharpness of the cutlasses, no mean challenge to the nerve and confidence as well as the coordination and accuracy of the team. This is the last show of a busy season for the display team, formed in March as annually since 1972, and we wish these young men good luck in their next appointments to ships at sea or shore establishments where they'll be dealing with equipment somewhat more intimidating and complicated, perhaps, than the whirling cutlasses in the Albert Hall. the sign-off of the Royal Navy Display Team, 1983.
thank you, the Royal Navy. Serving alongside the Royal Navy, you'll always find the Royal Marines. And over the years, their bands have enriched so many ceremonial occasions throughout our Commonwealth and the free world. Their music's become one of the traditions of our festival. And who better to represent those bands than the band of Her Majesty's Royal Marines, Commander-in-Chief Fleet, under the direction of Captain Wheeling. drum major Peter Pritchard and the Royals program under their director of music Captain Ted Wheeling this the regimental slow march Probrayensky then Sari Mare the march of the Royal Marine Commando a drum display and then the quick march Trafalgar
And so, as we come to the end of the service which plays today, the band and bugles of the Royal Marine Band will now play the naval ceremonial of evening colours, sunset. Band and corps of drums of Her Majesty's Royal Marines Commander in Chief Fleet. Thank you, Captain Wheeling and the Band of the Royal Marines for yet another stirring display. And for their contribution to our festival, our thanks go also to Colonel Ridings and the Massed Bands of the Guards Division. <laughs> and now to our family reunion. When we here today in this great Royal Albert Hall unite with those millions at home watching on television and listening on the radio, and sing those songs that have their own memories for us all. And this year, to lead us in our community singing, we welcome Miss Moira Anderson. Thank you very much. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Well, since it is the 350th anniversary of the Royal Scots, I thought it appropriate that we start with a Scottish chorus.
Now is the time for us to recall all those whose memories will never fade. We remember them all for the great surrender made in this, our service of remembrance. Presenting the Cardinal Archbishop of Westminster, Father Michael Bunce, Roman Catholic Chaplain to the Royal Military Academy Center. We offer to Almighty God our thanksgivings for the many blessings with which he has enriched our lives. For the Queen and her family, and all who under her bear the responsibility of government. Thank you. For those who serve in the armed forces of the Crown, on sea and land, and in the air. Thank you, Lord. For doctors, nurses, 
chaplains, and all who minister to those in need and distress. For the unity of our people within the Commonwealth. For the Royal British Legion. Glory be to the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, it is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. The Reverend Dr. Kenneth Slack, moderator of the Free Church Federal Council. Let us pray for all who are in need, those who are sick in mind, body, or estate, those in danger, those who are persecuted, those who are homeless, destitute, without work. And let us pray that God will bring them relief from their troubles. We commend to thy keeping, O Lord, all who are in any way afflicted or distressed. And we pray that thou wilt comfort and relieve them, giving them patience under their sufferings and a happy issue out of their afflictions. These prayers we offer in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Amen. Reverend Dr. Gerald Ellison, formerly the Bishop of London. Let us remember before God all who in the past have stood firm and fought the good fight of faith and into whose heritage we have entered and those who today strive against evil things and seek to establish the ideals of peace among all men. We remember. Let us specially remember all who have given their lives for the freedom of mankind, those who have suffered and who still suffer, those who devote their lives to the care of the victims of man's inhumanity. We, we will remember. remember them. And let us pray that we may be worthy of our inheritance. Remember, O Lord, what thou hast wrought in us and not what we deserve. And as thou hast called us to thy service, make us worthy of our calling. 
for Jesus Christ's sake. Amen. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, in earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive them that trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. National President of the Royal British Legion, General Sir Patrick Howard Dobson. They shall grow not old, as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. Unto God's gracious mercy and protection, we commit you. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace this night and always.
Let us give three cheers for Her Majesty Queen Elizabeth, the Queen Mother. Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. Hooray! Hip hip. The commentator at the Royal Albert Hall was Raymond Baxter. The festival producer was Bob Reeder, and television presentation was by Peter Mapp. <laughs>